Thank you for joining Strathmore's 2020 online workshop series. This is Leslie of Leslie Writes It All with a creative watercoloring class for you. Our first class will teach you how to paint florals inside letters. This time we're going to write the word home. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Here's what we need to get started on our project. The watercolors I'll be using is a Dowler Rowney Aquafine watercolor set of 24 different colors. We'll be using a Princeton Velvet Touch round tip watercolor brush in size 4. We'll also be using a pencil in order to sketch the outline of our lettering. And lastly, we'll be using a Strathmore watercolor block in the 400 series um, in order to paint our piece. So before we dive into the painting, let's learn how to paint the basic leaf shapes first. What I do is I use a Strathmore watercolor pad that I have and I just use the back side of it as scratch paper for practice. So go ahead and grab any scratch um, watercolor paper that you have and let's practice painting out some of the basic leaf shapes before we do it on the final piece. All these leaves have a really basic structure and when they come together they create something a little bit more um, intricate than what you see. So these are very simple shapes. The first leaf you see just has some um, pointed leaves. We're going to leave the center blank and that's going to insinuate the center of the leaf um, to give it a little more dimension than if we filled it completely in. So what you want to do is draw, paint out the main stem first and then we're just going to have tiny leaves shoot off of that. Um, the beauty of these types of leaves is that we have a lot of room for creativity since we're going to be filling in a shape. You want to make sure that you're flexible with how many leaves you want to add, which direction they need to um, be facing. So the nice thing about using a round tip brush is that you can create flatter, thicker areas of paint as well as, well as creating the really thin stems. So see how I'm pressing down to create a fuller leaf, um, but I'm using very light pressure when I want to just create a tiny little stem that comes off of it. Moving on to the second leaf, very similar to the first, what we're going to do though is create a more rounded type leaf. So all I did was draw, uh, paint out the center of the stem uh, like we did with the first leaf and then I'm just drawing these little shapes around it and then filling it in completely. So you can definitely add your own variations. Um, you can create the, make this first leaf smaller and then have them get larger as they go down. You can have the center be the, have the longest leaves and then have it taper down to smaller at the end. There's a lot of flexibility, like I said, because we are painting inside a shape, you need to be able to kind of move these leaves around to fill in the space. So in the case that we do need to make the leaf a little bit longer, you can go ahead and just extend out the bottom of the um, stem by painting it out a little bit and then adding additional leaves as you need um, to fill in this space. The next leaf shape is actually more of a berry. What you're gonna go ahead and do is draw out the stem again and have little shoots coming off of it. Then you're just gonna basically paint a circle and then we're gonna fill in the center. Here you can actually fill out the entire circle completely or you can leave a little bit of negative space which is that white space to kind of in, um, show that light is hitting it and that it is supposed to be kind of spherical and three-dimensional. I like to change out um, paints, colors um, in between berries and kind of just have them bleed into each other. If you see in the example, it kind of goes from like a reddish berry to a yellow berry to a more orange berry. I like seeing um, the colors interact with each other when they touch. So it's going to um, give it a little bit more um, visual interest if you do want to do that as well. So I like to also paint each berry kind of in a different um, size. That way you have a little bit more um, variation uh, going into it. Um, some of the berries, like I said, I do close in completely. So not all of them have the negative space inside as well. Um, there's just a lot of different ways that you can play with this, so um, make sure that you have fun with it. Painting circles is actually super therapeutic, and watching colors bleed together while painting circles is one of my favorite things to do to relax while painting. 
So like I said, these are all very basic shapes. This next leaf, leaf four, is actually in combination of probably the first leaf that we did and the second leaf. It's gonna have that rounded shape like that second leaf, but we're gonna leave a little bit of a negative space in it just to make it look a little more interesting. So go ahead and paint the shape, um, the outline of it, and then fill it in, but not completely. I like to leave just the ends of it kind of open um, so it kind of gives it a little bit more dimension. And you'll notice this one is a little bit different in that its composition, um, the leaves are not exactly across from each other like they were in leaf structure one and two. They're kind of just a little bit more random, um, just shooting off the main stem um, wherever you need it to go. Um, so again, this will give us tons of flexibility. You'll see later when we need to fill in the shapes of the letter. Leaf five is actually a really simple leaf to do. It's kind of more of a looser, um, abstract kind of leaf. It's very different from the other ones that we've been painting. Basically, you're gonna just draw the main stem and then just create these little rounded shapes that come right off the center. So some of it you're gonna leave open and then some of them you're gonna fill in. It's a very loose style, so you're just gonna make these tiny little loops around the stem. You'll notice that this leaf shape is narrower than the other ones, so it'll be good for fitting in tighter um, spaces once we start filling in the letters. Now for our sixth and final leaf. Um, this one's actually a really cute, um, whimsical design. It just basically has little tiny heart shapes that come off of it as the leaf. Um, so you're gonna create like a really branched out stem. Um, and then just at the ends of them, you're gonna paint in tiny little hearts. Um, you can go ahead and switch up the colors. It's just really easy. Paint the heart shape and then fill it on in. And for this leaf shape and all the other leaf shapes, there's no real right or wrong way to do it. Um, like I said, we're going to need to fill in the space. So you change the shape of this, um, these leaf structures as you need to. These are just kind of examples um, so that you have something to refer to. So it is good that we did this example ahead of time. So when you're actually working on the final piece, you can see um, maybe which leaf might look better um, in, in the composition of the whole piece. So I always do recommend that you sketch out um, or paint out ahead of time. Now that we've got our practice painting in, let's get down to the final piece. I printed out the word home. You can actually use any word that you'd like. This technique will apply to anything you want. Um, just work on the composition of your letters and once you're happy with it, go ahead and print it out. You're gonna flip the, um, the lettering over and use your pencil, the flat side, to kind of um, scribble all over it. What we're doing is kind of creating our own carbon paper. You're gonna see it's gonna help us trace um, the image onto our watercolor paper. Make sure that you get plenty of lead all over um, the letters. You want to make sure that you cover all the space where you see um, the lettering is. Um, that way we can easily transfer it to the watercolor paper once we start tracing it. So the nice thing about this technique is that you don't need any fancy tools like a light box or anything. You just need a pencil and you can honestly choose any word or any lettering style that you'd like as well. And once we're happy with the amount of lead that we have on the other side, just flip it on over. Um, and what I forgot to do is you should tape this down. Um, that prevents the top sheet from moving around too much. But I got too excited and jumped right into it. You're just going to use the sharp edge of your pencil now to trace the outline of that lettering. So right where the ink of your printer is, you're going to trace around it. And what's going to happen is that the ink from the back side is now going to transfer onto that watercolor paper. I'm gonna fast forward a little bit here to show you guys that I finished the whole thing, but really do go slow. This is the real pace that I'm going at. Um, get Doing it really slow is gonna get you the most um, accurate and easy to see um, outline. So once you're done tracing, go ahead and um, remove that sheet. We won't be using it any longer. Um, so you can see this really faint outline um, which is going to help guide you in your painting. So I told you that this practice sheet was going to come in handy. I keep it right next to me to help me kind of determine which shape leaf would go where. Um, it helps me with the composition so keep that close around. As for the color scheme, um, I am going to paint in the warm tones from the yellow down to the, the red. Um, it's going to be a very appropriate for fall color scheme. So you can feel free to paint in whatever color scheme you feel like. Um, 
it's easiest for me to determine ahead of time um, just so I can kind of plan ahead what colors I'll be using. So when you're um, using watercolors you want to always um, try to dilute it with um, water and then mix it on the pan or a palette. You don't really want to use the paint directly from um, the little paint pan because the concentration of that paint color is going to be really really dense. Um, so yeah, to go ahead and uh, mix them in, that's what that, that um, side panel there is for. It's for you to mix your paints. And now we're just going to start kind of um, placing leaf shapes um, where we think are most appropriate. I tend to try to paint larger areas uh, first with larger leaves and then fill in with smaller leaves um, to areas that, that need more coverage. So there's no um, real sequence in which I paint this. Um, I kind of, like I said, choose larger areas. So the, the section of the E is um, one of the thicker places. Um, so I do start there. Um, but you'll see that I do hop around a lot. Um, it's just sometimes I want to use that color yellow in other places, or I want to paint that same leaf shape. Um, I just kind of bounce around randomly. So there's no rhyme or reason if you're wondering how I'm choosing to do this. Um, like I said, I just, Personally, I tend to try to paint larger areas first. It's easier to do that and cover bigger areas and then fill in with um, different shapes later that need more, um, more paint. And this class is called Creative Watercoloring for a reason. It's meant to be fun and relaxing for you. Um, so just really have fun with it. Um, there's Again, there's no right or wrong way to paint this. Uh, you just want to find that the leaves that you choose will fit in the um, and basically in the outline of the, the letters. So it's kind of like advanced coloring or advanced coloring book um, for painting instead. And it would be great if I could just paint in like one static position so that everyone can see the time lapse, but it doesn't work like that. I am right-handed, but I need to rotate the paper a lot in order to get the right angle that I need. Um, so go ahead and feel free to move the paper around, adjust as you um, find com most comfortable. Um, you'll notice that I am painting the same shape leaf over. I think it's just a distribution to make sure that all the letters get kind of an equal representation of all the leaves. Um, so that's also one of the ways um, my thought process works um, in painting this, this um, outline. So now that every single letter has leaf uh, shape one inside, I'm going to start by choosing a different leaf shape. Um, you don't have to go in order, obviously, I think I'm just doing this to show you guys the possibilities, um, but you don't have to go in order and you certainly don't have to paint the same style um, way that I'm doing it. This is just my thought process. Uh, so this is leaf shape two. Again, you see it's going to look a little bit different than the example because I am trying to fill in the space um, of the E. So do your best to stay within the lines. Um, you'll notice that there are going to be some spaces that are going to be um, a little bit blank, like between the yellow leaf and the red leaf. You see like a tiny little triangle that um, has no coverage. We're going to fill that in a little bit later and I'll show you guys how I do that. Again, I'm using the second shape leaf um, to paint on into all the different letters to make sure we have an even distribution. Um, I am switching up the colors in between um, just to make it look more interesting. So here I am filling out the thickest part of the letter M. Like I said, it's easiest for me to work um, through the thicker, larger parts first and then fill in the smaller areas later. And remember what I said about leaf shape 5 coming in handy for uh, maybe some of the smaller um, areas of the letter. So here you'll notice that the M does get considerably thinner and so this leaf shape actually works really well to fit into kind of tighter spaces. So it's a little bit more of a delicate looking um, leaf. I did make the leaves a little bit smaller than the example in order to fit inside the outline. Um, so just tailor it as needed for um, the font that you chose.
So now I'm just using that Leaf Shape 5 again to fill in areas that have really thin, um, thin um, spaces to fill out. So this little um, cross on the H, there's going to be smaller parts on the E um, and the M also that probably will uh, benefit from using this smaller leaf shape. By now you can see that um, the word is actually starting to fill in a little bit. There's going to be areas, like I said, where um, you're not going to get you know, full coverage. So you'll see that I added like a single berry right there. So it's not you know, like the example that we went through, but it is still in theme with our overall motif. So um, you can just put a single berry or a single leaf if you do need to fill in spaces that um, maybe you didn't plan as well for like I did right there. And aside from filling in with berries, um, like I said, there's going to be areas where you're just not going to be able to fit a leaf in there. Uh, what I do is I put these tiny little dots like you see on the very end of the H um, just to fill in some of the corners that might be hard, kind of harder to reach or harder to paint in. So we're going to speed this up. It's a slow process. It's a little tedious. You're just going to keep building on each letter, painting in the areas that you haven't covered yet. Um, so over time you'll see that the letter starts to fill in like the M is pretty much done We're just finishing up the other letters now um, You want to just use a variety of the leaves. That's why we have six different types. It just adds visual interest um, And then just fill in the rest, but you can't reach with either a single berry or a tiny dot um, But it just takes time and you're just going to continue to build on it So when you're about at this point, you should be just about finished. Um, what I do is I kind of take a step back and see are any areas that have too much white space. I do add in tiny dots because um, once we erase the pencil lines, I don't want it to look like something is missing there. Um, so I do just step back and take a look before I um, am done with it. So at this point also, you're going to just let the paint completely dry before erasing the lines. Uh, make sure you don't rush this process because it will smear the paint. 
And of course I forgot to videotape myself erasing these pencil lines because I was so excited to be finished with the piece. Um, just make sure that everything is completely dry, you go slow, um, you can use like a regular eraser or a um, kneaded eraser is what I prefer so you don't get that leftover eraser dust, um, but any eraser really will do. Um, except a sand eraser and when you're done you have a beautiful piece that you can hang it's perfect for the holidays I think of Thanksgiving or just to celebrate the fall season and that's it for the first project in our workshop I hope you guys enjoyed please um, tune in for more classes to come um, other classes will build on the skills that you learned in this one so I hope you guys enjoy the other classes <music>